so exceedingly and abundantly above all all you could ask or think and it's a to you this morning and he's gonna fulfill every promise to you yeah thank you Jesus so don't give up on God cause he won't give up on you he's able <laughs> come on somebody say able
Would you just reach up and get it this morning? You can reach up and get it. You can reach up and get it. You can reach up and get it. You can reach up. Come on. I said, you can reach up and get it. You can reach up and get it. You can reach up and get it. Hey. Said he's able. He's able. He's able. He's able. He's able. God is able. He's able. I know he is. He's able. Don't you give up. He's able. Don't throw in the towel. He's able. He's able. He's able. Some way, somehow. He's able. Whatever you need. He's able. He's able. He's able. God is. He's able. He's able. He's able. I won't stop. He's able. And I won't quit. He's able. He's able. He's able. He's able. Yeah. He's able. He's able. So yeah. 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 Bible study once again. Listen, tonight we're going to finish our session, amen, on contentment. Last week we got started looking at the Apostle Paul there in chapter 4 as he told us that he had learned how to be content. And as a matter of fact, uh, it was so powerful, amen. I felt like we needed more time. And so tonight we're going to finish this lesson. So let's get right into the Word of God tonight. 
Paul depended on the power of Christ at work in his life. As a matter of fact, let me just read you a few scriptures to know that I, I, I know that Paul depended on the power of, of God to rest in his life. Uh, Philippians chapter one uh, and six and verse 21. He says, being confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. Then he goes on in verse 21 and says, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Philippians 2 and 12 through 13. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Let me say it again. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Then he goes on to Philippians 3 and 10. And, and let me read Philippians 3 and 10 to you. I, I love that because uh, uh, the Amplified Bible says it like this. Let me, let me give you let me give you 3 and 10 from King James. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. Listen to what he says in the Amplified uh, of Philippians uh, uh, 3 and 10. For, for my determined purpose is that I may know him, that I may progressively become more deeply and intimately acquainted with him, perceiving and recognizing and understanding the works or the wonders of his person more strongly and more clearly, and that I may in the same way come to know the power Outflowing from his resurrection, which which it exerts over believers, and that I may so share his suffering as to be continually transformed in spirit into his likeness, even to his death in the hope. I, I want you to go back and read this if you get a chance in the Amplified, because I want it's a lengthy. I won't read it again. But but here's a word I want to drop in your spirit that that really what Paul was saying here that's powerful. He says that 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 I may progressively, oh God help us, that 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 I may progressively know Him, the power of His resurrection, the fellowship of His suffering, that I may look like Him and be conformable into His death. Every believer. If we're going to experience God in a way that we've never experienced him before, there must be progression. You remember on Sunday, I told you that, that the disciples in one storm, they, 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 they were, they were like, what manner of God is this? And by the time they get to the second storm, they have now changed how they see him. Thou art the son of God. And in your walk, you ought to be constantly, consistently progressing. You ought to be better this year than you were last year. You ought, you ought to be better next year than you are this year. And and and, and as you do that, you, you will now begin to, to understand more and more and be able to utter with confidence, just like Paul, I can do all things through Christ. It, it became his motto and it become your motto too and my motto that, that if we challenge ourselves to progress in our walk, then, then our thought process becomes, as one scholar would say, I am ready for anything through the strength of the one who lives within me. The Living Bible puts it this way. I can do everything God asked me to do with the help of Christ who gives me the strength and power. No matter which translation you prefer, they all say the same thing. That for you and I, we all have power within that, that we, 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 we have all the power within that we need to be adequate to meet the demands of life. I'll say it again. God has given us everything. It is God. Listen to what I'll go back to the, to the previous scripture that I read before. Uh, uh, Philippians chapter two, verse 13. It says the last part there. He says, for it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. That, that you and I must understand that, that when we allow God into the deeper being of who we are, that, that, that there is a power by faith that is released into our lives that, 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 that God is now able to give us a level of confidence that no matter where you are 
in the sanctuary, you can utter like Paul did and say these words that I can do all things through Christ. I am ready for anything through the strength of the one who lives within me. I can do everything that God asked me to do with the help of Christ who gives me the strength and the power. My God. To, to meet the demands of life. And this happens when, when we, when we release this power. When we tap into the deeper things of God uh, uh, by faith and, 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 and what we're saying is that, God, I'm not trusting my own faithfulness, but but I'm looking away to the faithful one. I'll say it again. We're saying that, God, I'm not trusting in my own faithfulness because this this human uh, 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 house, this human structure can fail at any time. But but I'm not trusting my own faithfulness. But I'm looking to you, the faithful one. I'm drawing on the power of Christ for every responsibility of the day and, and, and trusting that, that Christ will, will, will carry me through any circumstance or through any situation. Now, somebody out, somebody, everybody, if you listening to me tonight on, on this, this social network, you ought to shout. I can do all things. Come on, shout it with confidence, knowing, knowing that, that he is your provision. Come on, shout it with confidence, knowing that he gives you power. I can do all things through Christ. That strengthens me. As a matter of fact, Jesus teaches us this lesson in the sermon on, on, on the vine and the branches in, in John 15 to help us understand where we draw our power. He says he, he, he lets us know that he is the vine. We are the branches and, and a branch is only good for bearing fruit. Otherwise, you might as well burn it. But but the branch does not bear fruit through its own effort. Yeah, you're designed to bear fruit. But you don't do it because you just want to bear fruit. But you you bear fruit because you draw on the life of the vine. Listen to Jesus in John 15 and 5. He reads, without me, you can do nothing. And, and, and so it is then that as you and I maintain our relationship and grow in our com relationship and we commune with Christ, the power of God is there to see you and I through any situation through any circumstance. I, I like how Paul puts it in Philippians 4 and 13 in the Amplified. It reads, I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. I'll read it again uh, in the Amplified. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. And, and then what I understand then that the overruling providence of God and, and, and the unfailing power of God are resources on which I can draw uh, to meet the uh, or, or be adequate for all the task of life that I may face. I don't know what you're dealing with tonight, but I, I'm hoping I'm helping you understand that there's provision uh, from God for you. I don't, I don't know what you're looking at or what you're dealing with or what you may face in the future. But I want you to remember tonight that, that, that there's always the overruling providence of God that's available to you. That, that everything that you will face going forward, uh, just believe that it, it's, it's an assignment that's a part of where God is taking you. And that no matter what you face, that there's an unfailing power of God that's available. But, but not only that, but there's, there's one more thing I want to let you know. There, there's the unchanging promise of God. Listen to Paul as he moves on through this, this, this last part of this chapter, verse 14 through 20. Uh, uh, he thanks the church at Philippi for their generous gift. He, he compares their giving to three familiar things. He, he says there in, in verse 10, if you go back and look, he says, he says that, that, that he compares them to a budding tree. When he says he used the, in verse 10 that the word flourish, it carries the idea of a flower or a tree budding or blossoming, blossoming. Often we go through winter seasons spiritually, but but then spring arrives and there is new life and blessing. A few weeks ago, I was out in my yard. And and if you look at the trees from a distance, all the leaves have fallen off the trees. The, 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 the fall uh, has caused the trees to fall. And, and as we're going through these winter months, we're, ex we're experiencing freezing temperatures. Uh, uh, but but one of the things I realized that if you get close to the trees, even with the freezing temperatures, you'll notice that the trees are budding. Oh, God help me. <laughs> it's still winter, but they're budding. Uh, we're still getting freezing temperatures, but they are budding. And I want to let somebody know right now that in the, in the winter of your life, uh, uh, spring is on the way. But guess what? You don't have to wait until spring to celebrate the new life and the blessings. You ought to just know right now that you're budding, that, 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 that you're, you're, you're beginning to blossom. That, that, that winter won't kill you. 
But but winter is a time for the blooms to come out. Winter is a time uh, uh, for for you to now to now understand that there's there's a new season coming for your life. And, and, and get this. One of the things about those trees is that each year they stay in the same place. They, they don't get picked up and moved. And, and what I want to say to some of y'all is that some of your circumstances ain't going to change. But but guess what? That in the middle of your circumstances, you can still bloom. You can still bud. The, the difference is, is that that every 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 season, although the circumstances are still the same, that there's a new life within you, that that there's a there's a newness that that comes in the middle of it all, that that God works in your life, causing you to flourish. My God, somebody else shout up in here, causing you to flourish. It just reminded me of something. I'm, I'm going to look real quick here because because I, I thought about, about, about a, a psalm, a scripture from Psalms. And let me just real quick bring that to you because it just hit my spirit. And, and let me let me bring it up to you. Um, stay with me for just a moment. I'm sorry. This is not my typical style for, for Bible study, but this just hit my spirit. My God, my God, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Uh, still flourishing, still flourishing. Some of y'all already know the scripture that I'm looking for. I'm going to Psalms real quick. Psalms, Psalms. It's the beauty of, 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 of teaching from, 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 from the computer. And I got I got the got the ability to look something up real quick. Ah, God. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Psalms 92 and 12. Thank you. Thank you. Psalms 92 and 12 says that, that, that the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in, in, in Lebanon. Psalms 92 and 13 says that those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Uh, Psalms 132 and 18 says, his enemies will I clothe with shame, but upon him shall, shall his crown flourish. He that trusteth in riches shall fall, but the righteous shall flourish as a branch. Remember what I said about what, what Paul says here, uh, uh, that word flourish is the idea of budding or blossoming. That, that, that no matter what you face in this walk, that you always going to be budding or blossoming. Somebody say, I've been, I've been designed to flourish. Come on, right there in your situation and in things that you may face in the future. And as some of you look, some of you look back, amen, at the past, all that was happening was as God was causing you to flourish. And so, so the first thing he says there in verse 10 is that, uh, that you're flourishing. He, he makes reference to a budding tree. The second thing that he says in verse 14 and 17 is this, is that, that there's an investment taking place. He looked on the, the gift, uh, or the missionary gift as an investment that would pay them rich, Spiritual dividends. The word communicate uh, found here in, in the text. The word communicate in, in, in Philippians 4 and verse 14. Notwithstanding, we ye have well done that ye did communicate with my affliction. This word communicate is, is our familiar word fellowship. In that the church entered into an arrangement with Paul of giving and receiving. The church gave materially to Paul. And receive spiritually from the Lord. I'll say it again. The church entered into an arrangement of giving and receiving. The church gave materially to Paul and received spiritually from the Lord. The church entered into an arrangement of giving and receiving. The church gave materially to Paul and received spiritually from the Lord. Uh, I want to let somebody know tonight that, that the Lord keeps the books and, and will never fail to pay one spiritual dividend. Somebody, I, shout, I got dividends on the way. If you know, if you know you've been in, as a believer in the process of giving and receiving, uh, that you've been doing your part, come on, go ahead and lift your hand up. As a matter of fact, lift both hands up and say, I, I got some spiritual dividends on the way. Go ahead and clap your hands and give God some praise for your spiritual dividends. Uh, uh, because those that are, that are poor, uh, that, that fail, that those that are poor, perhaps it's because you, you fail to share materially with others. And then, then knowing that, but Paul goes into, he talks about another aspect of, of his life. Uh, there's the sacrifice. The third thing is the sacrifice in verse 18. Paul, Paul looked on their gift as a spiritual sacrifice laid on the altar to the glory of God. 
and, and, and there are such things as spiritual sacrifices in our lives as believers. As a matter of fact, First Peter 2 and 5 reads, Ye also are as lively stones are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Romans 12, 1 through 2 says, I beseech ye therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable sacrifice. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We, we are to yield our bodies as spiritual sacrifices. But not only that, but, but we also are to, to use our lips, uh, according to Hebrews 13 and 15. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. I'll say that again, that, that our lips ought to be presenting sacrifice, that, that the sacrifice of praise ought to come continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. And, and so not only that, uh, that, that we present our bodies to live in sacrifice, our lips provide sacrifice. But then he goes on in Hebrews 13 and 16 and tells us that, that our deeds communicate sacrifice. Listen to what he says there. But to do good. And to communicate, forget not. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. I'll say it again. But to do good and, and to communicate, forget not. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. And then in, in Romans chapter 15, verse 16, uh, lost souls that, that we are privileged to win the Christ. According to Romans 15, 16, this is what he says. That I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles ministering the gospel of God that the Gentiles, those of us that are not of Israeli heritage, the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. Here, Paul sees the Philippian believers when he talks about sacrifice. He sees these people that are given into him. He sees them as priests, giving their offering as a sacrifice unto the Lord. But but Paul does not does not see the gift as simply coming from the from from Philippi. He sees it as a supply of his need from heaven. Paul's trust was in the Lord, not in the people at Philippi. He thanked them, but, but what he saw them doing, this gift was, was not simply coming from them, but he saw in what they were doing, God was supplying his need from heaven. God, God was, was in this, this, this promise keeping God. Y'all heard Bishop Sean's, uh, Smith talk about God, God, God is a promise keeper a few weeks ago. This, Promise keeping God. Paul tells us tonight that, that his trust was in the Lord because this is interesting, uh, interesting contrast because we look at Philippians 4, 18 and 19. Uh, it says this, uh, or we might state in this way, if we were to par paraphrase Paul. He says, you met my need and God is going to meet your need. You met one need that I have, but my God will supply all your needs. You have gave out of your poverty. But God will supply your needs out of his riches and glory. Did y'all get that? You met my need and God is going to meet your need. You met one need that I have, but God will meet all of your needs. And because of this, you gave out of your poverty, but God will supply your needs out of his riches in glory. I, I want to help somebody tonight because God has not promised to supply all of your greeds or my greeds. Uh, uh, God has promised to, to supply our needs uh, out of his riches and glory. And when you and I as believers are in the will of God, serving for the glory of God, then, then he will meet not some needs, not not every now and then need. But but I declare and decree that that when you are in the will of God and whether you and when you are serving for the glory of God, then then God is going to meet. Every last one of your needs. And so so then when you looked in from what we're talking about tonight, I can now understand how Paul was content because Paul's contentment was coming from adequate resources. These resources were the providence of God. These resources were the power of God. These resources were the promises of God. And these resources 
made sufficient for every demand of life as they did for Paul. They can do the same thing for us. They will make us sufficient too. Somebody ought to shout with me right now that, that, that as I do what God has told me to do, God provides uh, uh, his providence. As I communicate and do what God has told me to do, there is available to me the power of God. As I move forth and obey and do what God has called me to do, I now reside under the promises of God. And, and herein, herein is where I get my contentment. And when I can look and say, I'm good, somebody ought to shout back at me right now. If you know that the providence of God is over your life, if you know the power of God is over your life and the, and the promises of God are over your life, you ought to shout. Paul says that I've learned to be content, but, but let's bring it, amen, to, to modern day language. Somebody ought to shout, I'm good. <laughs> somebody ought to shout, I'm good because of the providence of God. I'm good because of the power of God. I'm good because of the promises of God. Come on, lift your hands on this social network tonight and shout, I'm content. As a matter of fact, shout, I'm good. High five somebody virtually, amen. Come on, write, write one of these adequate resources down. Come on, tell somebody I got the providence of God. Come on, tell somebody I got the power of God. Somebody tell somebody I'm under the promises of God. And because of these things, I am content. As a matter of fact, I heard somebody say, if he don't do nothing else. He's already done enough. But guess what? We ain't going to stop there because we know in this life that God's going to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask a thing. That as we keep moving, as we keep flourishing, as we keep going, as we keep doing what God has called us to do, that God's going to meet every demand of our life and he's going to make us sufficient. Now, come on, somebody, everybody, give God a praise of contentment. Come on, shout it. I'm good. Come on, shout it. I'm good. And so we give God all the praise tonight. We give God all the glory. So God, I thank you for your word. I thank you, God, as we walk through this chapter of God and looked at Paul saying that I've learned to be content. God, I shout right now and help. Oh God, shout right now in the atmosphere for those that are, are listening, God, that have, have listened to this word, oh God, that as they go back and look at the notes, oh God, that they'll understand that, 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 that they are operating under the providence of God. They, they have your, your unfailing power, God. And then, then that, that, that your, your, your never ending or, 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 or your promises, oh God, that, that, that are, are there and that they will come to fruition over the, our lives, over the lives of believers. And as Paul spoke, oh God, uh, in a way, in spite of his circumstances, he said, I'm content because I believe Paul knew that he had the providence of God. I believe Paul knew he had the power of God. And I knew Paul, I, I know that Paul had come to a place that where he had progressed in his walk, that he understood the promises of God over his life. And Father, I pray right now for all that are under the sound of my voice, that, that we will walk in such a way, oh God, that, that we as believers, not that we won't ever have any needs, oh God, but, but we, we learn to be content. We learn to sometimes just say, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I got the providence of God. I got the power of God within me. I got the promises of God over me. I'm content. I'm good. And so, God, I thank you tonight for this word. I thank you that it will go out and that it will accomplish its purpose. And I give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory in Jesus' name. God, if there's somebody out there that does not know you tonight, oh, Lord, that, that is a sinner, oh, God, that's listened to this word, that's, that's been convicted or pricked in their heart, oh, God, I pray right now, God, that they, they will acknowledge you and say that I'm a sinner. And, God, I need your, I need, I need. I, I ask Christ to come into my life tonight. I, I vow tonight, oh God, to turn from the direction that I've been going. And now I choose to become a follower, a disciple of Christ. I choose to connect with a church that's teaching Bible. That, that, that not only do I now have abundant, not only will I have abundant life in this life, but I will have eternal life in the life to come. And so God, I thank you right now for those that will pray that prayer, that you, you're forgiving them of their sins, oh God. That, that by your blood, all their sins have been taken care of. And God, I thank you right now that this word may have challenged someone to step up tonight to another level. I thank you, God, that, that the work that you're doing in this, in this ministry right now, God, you, you're putting us in a place, oh God, where, 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 where you're calling us to a deeper place in you, oh God. I thank you, God, that, that the work that you're doing in this place, that you're reviving and you're restoring. And you're not doing it emotionally, oh God. But you're doing it through word like what we're teaching tonight. And God, I give you praise. I give you glory. I give you honor. It's in your son Jesus name we pray. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Listen, God bless you. 
Thank you for joining us tonight. Listen, now is the time that you can participate in the ministry or in the worship of giving. Uh, we all know that we always say that the tithe is 10% of our giving, uh, and that's not negotiable. Whatever uh, God has blessed you with, 10%, you say, hey, this belongs to God. Now I'm going to also ask you to allow God to speak to your heart about your offering on tonight. Please uh, ask God to touch you about your giving, amen, uh, or to consider what you should sow tonight in the offering. Not only that, amen, we look forward to seeing you this Sunday in worship. Uh, I believe that there's going to be a powerful word in the house. So listen, God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your week. And remember, for every season, there is a word in season. We love you. God bless you. Thank you.